Hey guys, this is Simon here with Caddis Fly Shop and Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to tie this awesome cricket today that I'm really excited to share with you guys. Um, I tied it for a trip I went on to the Driftless and it was by far my favorite fly. I wish I tied like five, six, maybe even ten more. It was so grassy I lost a bunch in the banks, but this was my top producer there. Um, it's really great. Now coming up on terrestrial season, there's crickets and hoppers and all sorts of stuff all over. Um, so you can use this general framework to tie a hopper um, in this cricket pattern. It worked really good. Um, it you know lays really flat, nice on the water. Um, it was just was a really good fly for me. So I'm excited to share it with you guys today. Okay. Um, hey guys, this is Simon here with Caddis Fly Shop and Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. Sorry, let's try that again. <laughs> hey guys, this is Simon here with Caddis Fly Shop and Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to tie this awesome cricket today. That I'm really excited to share with you guys. Um, I tied it for a trip I went on to the Driftless and it was by far my favorite fly. I wish I tied like five, six, maybe even ten more. It was so grassy I lost a bunch in the banks, but this was my top producer there. Um, it's really great. Now coming up on terrestrial season, there's crickets and hoppers and all sorts of stuff all over. Um, so you can use this general framework to tie a hopper um, in this cricket pattern. It worked really good. Um, it you know, lays really flat, nice on the water. Um, it was just was a really good fly for me, so I'm excited to share it with you guys today. Cool. Cool. Um, so getting a closer look at this fly, um, we're using an A-Rex hook, um, the Sedge Dry Barbless um, FW531 size 12. Um, you can tie it as small as you want. Um, 12 worked good for me. Um, <clears throat> it uses this foam from Hairline, the uh, Evazote foam. Um, it's kind of this like weird, squishy, slightly iridescent foam that I don't think it soaks up water as much as the other foams. It, it's more like sealed on the outside, and it's, and it's kind of like stretchy. It's kind of weird, <clears throat> but it's a foam that I wanted to kind of play around with, and I ended up using it on this fly. Um, you can tell it's used in the back and the head. Um, it uses some round rubber legs, goose biots, and just some dubbing and hackle. It's pretty pretty simple. There's a hot spot so you can see it. It is a dark colored fly so it can be tough to see at times so this hot spot um, did help quite a bit and there's a little bit of a widow's web or EP trigger point whatever you want um, is the wing. You know mainly just to help you see it. Um, so we'll get started here. Um, like I said I'm using the uh, FW531 uh, A-Rex hook. Really good hook. It's a sedge hook. It's just got that kind of bend towards the back. It works uh, really great for this fly. Um, and so the thread I'm using, again, I'm using the Semperfly stuff, this Nano Silk. Uh, it's 50 denier in uh, black. It's kind of unbreakable, really good thread that I like to use a lot. Um, so we'll take wraps to the back. The first step in tying this fly is um, to put two goose biots down. Um, I like to use these strip goose biots from Hairline. Um, they're pretty easy. You get loads of them in a pack, um, and it takes quite some time to run through a pack, uh, even if you use them a lot. So, black is the color I like, um, and this will just be like the tails of the cricket. Um, you know, something you can probably omit, but it's what I tied all of mine with. So, I'm going to do it for you guys here today. Um, and so, I like to measure them out to stick out enough past the foam, but not so much where it's kind of too much. So, you do one side, and then to get the other side and try to match it uh, with the length. So I like to tie it in with a couple wraps to secure it and then if you go too tight you can't slide it, that's the key. So you want to leave just enough tension to hold it in place where you can uh, measure it and get it at the right, the right size. So uh, those look pretty even to me so we'll take some wraps up here um, and then we'll snip off the, the ends here. Um, <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is use this uh, Eve, Eva's oat foam. 
Um, I like to take a strip that's about maybe a tenth of an inch. Um, you'll see when I when I tie it down, it pretty much vanishes. Um, so it, it compresses more than a standard foam, and it can stretch too, which is kind of different. So when I'm building the body, or when I'm tying it back like this, I like to stretch it back. And you can tell now that I'm pulling back here, um, it's actually taking up less space on the hook. So it's a good foam if you want like a low profile fly with foam that you have to tie back like this because it just doesn't take up a lot of space on the shank. It compresses pretty easy. Um, so I like to take wraps back to the biots here. I want to make sure I'm all the way back. I am not. Um, once I get all the way back here, I want to tie it all down pretty tight. Um, I will do some dubbing. I like to use this micro fine dry fly dub in uh, Trico. It's black, kind of like a black ground color. Um, and I will take a bunch of this just to build up uh, the abdomen of the cricket here. Make a dubbing noodle here. And then we'll kind of just fill this in back here. Um, kind of try to make like a bulbous section because crickets do have that fatter abdomen. Um, this is the easiest way I've found to get that without it going too wide. It's just to load up some dubbing beneath the, this back part. Um, just like this. And you want to wrap up enough where um, it has a large enough abdomen, but also leave enough space where you can um, pop the wing in and the legs and the, uh, the uh, hackle up by the, the head of the fly. So um, this looks pretty good to me. This is, you know, for me, this is enough space to work. Um, another thing, you know, I'm going to add just a hair more because you'll see when it gets pinched down, you kind of lose a little bit of space on the abdomen just because of the way this stuff compresses. And, you know, if you tie it down like this, it rides pretty high. If you stretch it, it's lower. So I like to stretch it a little bit and then pinch it down where I need. Um, that looks perfect to me. Um, and the cool thing about this stuff is if I do have to encroach on the abdomen, I can, you know, pinch it down. And so what we're going to do next is um, we'll take wraps up here to just secure it. Um, we will just get rid of this foam altogether on this fly by making the head, and then it's not really in your way. Um, so what I like to do now is kind of get it out of my way and just pinch and pinch and pinch until we get to the, uh, the head of the fly here. Like this. Um, and then you kind of make a little bump here and then pinch it down and then kind of tie it back and if you pull it'll just come off um, and that's kind of what we want we want to just have enough space to do the hackle and legs and stuff and enough just to make like a little head um, and then that way you're not really crowding the eye of the hook or anything um, and now the foam is completely out of our way and so that f now I can wrap back a little bit to give myself some more real estate like that um, so for the legs I like to use these fine round um, rubber legs in black um, I think they knot really well um, and so you just kind of do an overhand knot and you can do one either way um, you kind of do one and then you mirror it to get them to uh, flare out the right way and so I like to have the leg coming back towards the body like this. Oh, just, just like that. And then we'll tie the other one in. Um, something I like to do just for durability of the fly is I like to, um, I like to put a little bit of uh, glue on the uh, knot just so it holds. I'm sure it will without it, but just for the longevity of the fly, um, especially if the fish are keyed in on these bugs, it's going to get beat up if you're casting it out there. So um, before I make any cuts, I do like to add just a little dab of um, Zappa Gap, you know, just a tiny little bit just to hold that knot. Um, and I'm going to let that dry before I um, clip the legs down. It doesn't take too long. Um, 
And then for the leg, what I like to do is I like to clip the bottom part of the, uh, you know, for the for these back legs, um, I should have explained this. I like to use uh, two of them doubled up, and the reason I like to use these specific rubber legs is because they stick together until they are uh, separated. Is like the big draw for me. So um, they will stay together until you pull them apart. Um, so it makes knotting the f the fatter back legs uh, really really easy. Um, so here we have our legs in um, how we want them, and then next we need to tie in a wing, um, widow's web white. Um, EP trigger point, um, Zilon, whatever you have. Uh, the Widow's Web is, floats really, really well. That's why I like it. Um, and we'll tie it in here, kind of towards the back. And then I like to kind of just do a sloppy big cut at first, and then I will kind of adjust as as I go if I need to make it a little smaller. Um, perfect. And then um, a little hot spot I like to do just so I can see it. This is EP trigger point in fluorescent pink. I like to just tie a little bit in here. And this is just so, you know, I can see it. Um, I have glasses, vision's not great, so it just helps me keep track of where my fly is. And then I will trim this down just a hair. Um, that looks good. It's enough to add a little bit of buoyancy and, um, you know, just visibility. And so next, um, I'm going to tie in the hackle. What I'm using for hackle is a um, half saddle from Whiting. Um, in black, um, size doesn't really matter. I tend to go bigger because I clip it down anyways. So this is a 12, so you can do a 12. Um, you can also go smaller, but you know this fly floats pretty good. But the hackle does help a little bit. Um, so we'll tie it in back there. Um, one more round rubber leg to. Uh, add a second set of legs. Um, this is kind of optional, you don't have to do this. I like to squeeze an extra pair in. Um, and so we'll tie this in right here, kind of about midway up the body. And wrap it around the front like this. I like to leave a, a little loop in the front to leave the legs longer than I will actually cut them. And then I'll just trim them down to size. Perfect. And I will cut that and that. Then I will add just a little bit more dubbing and then we'll pull the hackle up and then uh, whip finish it. So same dubbing, this trico dubbing. Um, this will just help hold the hackle in place here. Um, start from the back here. Kind of work around these legs a little bit. Um, you know, and this is kind of optional, but I think it helps hold the hackle in place just a little bit better. So, something I do. Um, so, these legs, I'm going to trim down just a little bit to make wrapping the hackle easier. I'll probably adjust a little bit again before I'm done, but um, kind of got to weave the hackle through this buggy mess of legs, um, which I think is worth doing, just because the extra legs I think help. I try to do tight wraps despite all these legs in here. Um, once you get through the, these first set, it's pretty easy. These can just give you a little bit of, of trouble. And that is not what you want to happen. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to spin it. Yeah, here we go.
Okay, so once you get that kind of secured, take several wraps so it doesn't come undone. Um, you can kind of help the legs back into place. Um, I will clip this excess. And then whip finish here. And then I do clip down the, um, the end here. So now I will, you know, trim the legs if I need. Um, I kind of like the length they're at right now. And then um, you can kind of pull them in place if the hack will move them. Um, I like to trim the bottom down like this. Just so it kind of rides more flat. Um, but this is this cricket pattern that, you know, worked awesome for me when I was in the driftless. Um, it you know will work probably anywhere where there's terrestrials all over the place you know as fall comes the fish are really keying in on these bugs um, to hold everything together especially if you're clipping the bottom you can put some solar as you know into the dubbing on the bottom and where you clipped and that'll really just hold this together um, I like to lately I've been trying to just put a little effort into making my bugs last um, so it's kind of a pain when you take time to tie a fly and it comes apart. So um, here's Cricut. Let us know what you think. Thanks.